Welcome back to the Making the Madness YouTube channel. Sean back again for another video today on some more transfer related news. This one is pretty unexpected, but huge news in the college basketball landscape. It is Oregon securing the commitment of talented Oklahoma transfer to former top 50 recruit Davion Harmon, a guy that averaged 14 a game last season for the Sooners with Lon Kruger departing. He decided to transfer, shot 47% from the field, 34% from deep. Certainly has a ways to go shooting-wise, but is very good at driving to the basket. One of his bigger uh, skill sets for sure because he's super quick off the dribble, very good athlete, and he can pull it from the mid-range. He's a very versatile scorer. I think he has a ways to go shooting-wise, and I think he'll certainly pick up the slack as the time goes. Oregon, they're losing a lot from last season's team. You look at Chris Duarte, he is going pro. He's going to be a first-round pick. LJ Figueroa, he's going to play uh, pro ball, pr probably a G League guy. And then you look at Eugene, Eugene Omarui, he is not using the free year either. He will be moving on also. You lose Chandler Lawson to Memphis. You lose uh, Aaron Estrada. He hasn't picked his transfer destination yet, but he's transferring. You lose Jalen Terry to DePaul today. So what does the roster look like next season? At the one, you have Will Richardson, one of the best guards in the Pac-12, potentially Pac-12 preseason player of the year, which is likely what I will coin him as. And then at the two, you're looking at Davion Harmon. That's a very good one-two, probably the best guard duo in the Pac-12. Then at the three, you're probably going at, with the current roster construction, you're looking at Eric Williams Jr., the former Duquesne uh forward he is he's not a you know he's a wing slash four he's a hybrid combo forward so that certainly works out there and at the four and five you can you have a variety of ways you can go here you can use luke war who you probably don't want to use he hasn't started a ton in his career but do you want to go super big that's that's an option it's not the way that basketball is usually played nowadays but do you want to go with a former five-star guy in uh nefali dante who's really struggled with injuries paired with nate biddle a five-star recruit in this class i mean that's not the worst pairing you know that can work frank frank kepning he has a high few he has a high ceiling also he's a four-star guy isaac johnson same deal a four-star guy those are four guys that are 610 plus that they'll they'll have to play together with the way the roster is currently constructed obviously things can change they're in on a lot of different guys via the transfer portal they're looking at a lot of juco guys they currently have offers out for rivaldo soars and tyrone williams two talented guards soars is from south plains one of the best teams in all of juco hoops and tyrone williams one of the best scorers in juco basketball last season also a shooting guard and you know i i think that they're going to add a stretch four at some point but for now i i would envision the starting five looking like this will richardson davion Harmon, eric williams jr you're going to go Nate Biddle at the four and Nefali Dante at the five, and that's a good basketball team. It's not deep because you only have about eight scholarship guys right now. You have guys to add without a doubt, but Dana Altman knows how to reconstruct rosters, and he will certainly figure out a way to make this roster better than it looks right now, and it looks good right now. It just is missing a few pieces, but he'll pick up the pieces, find out how to make it work. Maybe he'll look at Trey Mitchell, a guy, the top transfer on the board, pretty – uh. You know, not a debate that he's the best transfer on the board at the moment. You can add him. You can add Dylan Disu from Vandy. And those are two guys that add a lot of versatility. But if you can add a guy like Trey Mitchell, that changes the entire outlook because he's a guy that could play the four, and he can hit threes at a high clip. So if you're able to add a guy like that that can stretch the floor, that changes what Oregon is. But at the moment, they're a really good basketball team that should make another NCAA tournament and be a contender in the Pac-12. Uh, thanks for checking this video out. Definitely appreciate the support. Jonathan and I are going to continue pumping out this content. Definitely like and subscribe. Until next time, have a good one.